Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He's kind enough to grace us with our presence again. The head coach for the Cal men's swim team, head coach of the now 2021 men's Olympic team. Today, we're talking to Dave Durden. Thank you, Coleman. <laughs> I, I thought you were in big oh, baller sure. brand, but apparently that's not big the baller, case. No, this, there's, there's baller brand. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that the yeah, team so shirt for the shirt, year? Uh, yeah, no, it was a team shirt uh, in 2019. So our seniors uh, sort of, uh, you know, kind of hijacked the big baller brand. And, uh, you know, we'll probably, you know, I'll probably get sued for wearing this on the, on the Swim Swam podcast, but uh uh, no, they, they did this back in 2019 and, um, you know, it was the, uh, it was the top of the laundry pile today. So, you know, it, uh, it goes on for this interview. Made it on the podcast. I'm, I'm guessing LeVar Ball doesn't watch the Swim Swam podcast. So I think you're safe, but I guess you never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right. So first off, we I think we just reported that the Pac-12 dates are set for the University of Houston. Um, tell me, I mean, and then and it, I didn't realize the coaches decided that. Um, so you guys kind of had a say into that. Can you tell me what that process has been like? Because I also heard that there it, there was a time when it was going to be in San Antonio, and then that fell through. And you know what what has this process been like of just being having a Pac-12s? Well, I mean, I think there, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be the one speaking uh, on behalf of the Pac-12 because there was a lot of coaches um, that put a lot of work into this. I mean, Joe Dykstra uh, put a lot of work into this. Um, you know, Jeremy Kipp put a lot of work into this. Um, he, you know, Dan put a lot of work into this. Uh, you, you know, there was, there was a lot of coaches involved. In, in sort of uh, landing at the University of Houston and, and then our Pac-12 liaison for swimming and diving, Cheryl Wong, uh, did a ton of work with this. Uh, so I'm, I'm speaking on, on behalf of their hard work uh, in, in landing at the University of Houston. One of the things that we had decided uh, a while back uh, and, and I should say too, you know, Jordan at UCLA did a phenomenal job with it. I mean, so there's so many people in, in uh, that were involved with this um, that, that I really shouldn't speak, but, um, but I'll, I'll give you a little background on it. Um, Great. The, you know, yeah, back, back in January, as we were trying to, to, to land on a, on a site to host us, it was becoming evident that, uh, you know, Federal Way was, was going to be a challenge. And so as we started to expand our search, uh, we were looking for a fast pool indoor facility. Uh, we were just, you know, thinking of a, a bunch of different places, a bunch of different options as we were uh, moving through it. And, and we finally landed at um, uh, University of Houston. Chris Pesman, who's the athletic director there, uh, was, uh, had, a, had a role uh, in really helping us uh, get there. A phenomenal uh, job in, in, um, in, in really kind of reaching out, working with Pact. Well, uh, to help us get in there, and and Ryan Walkamerka, the the head coach there at University of Houston, again was really helpful with it. And I was actually out in San Antonio at the Pro Series meet in January, and uh, spent some time on the phone with uh, with Ryan, and and uh, and he had sort of put the bug in my ear that uh, University of Houston would be available and interested. Um, I was you know kind of looking at hotels and and you know trying to figure out some logistics. Uh, it, had we been at, in San Antonio or at the pool in San Antonio. So it just worked out well for us to, 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 to go to Houston um, and, and to get there. And, and if you notice the dates are our women's dates are on the traditional uh, Wednesday through, uh, through Saturday and our men, uh, our men's dates start the day after. And, you know, we, we made that decision to, to help out with uh, the coaches of combined programs so that they're not traveling back and forth or they're not staying uh, there in Houston for an extra three and a half days before the men's meet starts, I guess two and a half days before the men's meet start. Uh, so uh, we're, we're just trying to, to, to be thoughtful about everybody uh, in our 
in our conference, provide an environment for our athletes to swim fast. And, um, you know, the closest place we could get to was Houston. So it, uh, it, it worked out well. We're, we're excited to get there and, and, uh, and, and get racing. And as I, I know, I'll, um, you know, having just raced uh, USC this past weekend, you, you know, they're excited to get there and, and race. And, and, you know, we have a dual meet coming up with Stanford. And, and, and I know that they're, um, you know, I- excited about the opportunity to get indoors and, and, uh, and, and, and see what we can do. Yeah. I, I, so I appreciate the background, the insight on, on that decision. And then let's, let's turn the focus to these dual meets. I mean, you, the, the bears put up some eye popping times, at least for, for the lay people, for the fans watching, you know, looking through the results, it was like, Whoa, this is, this is, it was just so good to have swimming back. What was the prep? Like what, uh, both in the pool and just kind of, you know, getting the guys excited, uh, to finally race in a legit dual meet um, after so long. Yeah, you, you know there was a um, you know there was a couple things that we were trying to take care of, um, and, and really, if I you know back up to to our racing in November, mm-hmm. um, you know there was some things there that we were you, you know just pretty thoughtful of, and 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 trying to make sure that we were navigating this season in a unique way, a different way. I mean, it feels like my first year of coaching. Uh, because everything is so different and, um, and, and it really forces you to think about some things in a, in a different way, how we go through training cycles, how we lay out our season, you know, wh- what are the important times of year? I mean, you know, normally we would go to a mid season invite, uh, take care of some things in terms of, uh, NC2A qualification or really get a good gauge where, where our athletes are at that point in time, and then make adjustments and head through the second half of the season. But uh, we didn't know if we were going to have a second half of the season. We didn't know if we were going to be able to race in the second half of the season. We didn't know what racing looked like in the second half of the season. And so uh, when the Pac-12 allowed us to race in November um, and, and we were able to get Stanford on the books, they, they came over. One of the unique challenges about having a dual meet at that time in November, uh, based on our guidelines given to us by the uh, Berkeley Public Health Department, is that we could only have of 40 people in our facility uh, at, at a time. So uh, if you take the 20 athletes from Stanford, uh, uh, two coaches, uh, officials, folks running the timing system, uh, myself and Chase, all of a sudden we can only have about eight of our athletes in the facility at the same time. So uh, Coleman, you, you've been out our way and you know that, that we have a couple pools and, and, they're, and they're fairly close together. So a lot of our guys were down warming up at the other pool, they would uh, walk up Bancroft, um, you know, with their with their backpack, <laughs> with their tech suit on. They would come into the facility. They would put their backpack down. They would step up on the blocks. They would race. They would grab their backpack and they would exit the facility and they won down uh, at Legends. So it was a it was a unique way uh, to step up and race and. You know, with with that sort of format uh, in mind, we could only race one event because uh, we, we were cycling guys in and out of the facility and, and we sort of targeted uh, some of our athletes better events uh, just to help with one to see where our see where our athletes are at that point in time. And yes, we, we threw some suits on and two, just to see if we could take care of some uh, NC2A qualification piece of things uh, individually. And in that month of November, we couldn't uh, we couldn't race uh, relays. We uh, we were just allowed to race individual events. So so we did that uh, the next weekend, and, and we swam well, and and so we and we felt good about it. So it's like, it's like okay, let's let's get back to work. <laughs> you know, we're good, we're fine. You know, let's let's get back to work. And um, and and we we went through that next week and, and the week going into Thanksgiving, and then sub- subsequently, without having an invite, which we normally go right after Thanksgiving, we, we, we were able to get some really solid uh, work done, probably a little bit more than, than I thought as we, as I, you know, kind of stepped back and, and looked at it from a 20,000 foot view. It's like, wow, we, uh, yeah, we worked a little bit harder in December than, than we have in, in any of my previous years, just by the nature of, 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 of what we were doing and, it, 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 you know, not having a, a meet that we were getting a little bit ready for and, and, and just getting into a nice flow pretty early uh, in December, really at the end of November. So as we got to our uh, dual meet against uh, USC this past weekend, uh, we, we raced two days. As, as you saw, we were able to get four of our five relays in. 
And, uh, you, you know, that, that led us to kind of stop and think about, okay, what do we, what do we need to, to, to sort of check the box in with, uh, with, with relay qualification for NC2As? We felt pretty good about where we were with some of our individuals. It's like, okay, well, how do we handle relays? And, and you, you know, for coaches out there that, you know, you, you know that you need a qualifying standard and, and we have a provisional standard as well. So uh, we wanted to hit one of those qualifying standards and one of those relays. We felt good about our 400 medley um, being an aggregate provisional time. So we just sort of let that one sit and we, and we you know, kind of raced in, in, in normal suits. And, and that, uh, I'll stop just for a second there. It was actually nice to race in normal suits. I mean, we hadn't done that since... February, you, you know, so just to race in, in speedos and, and to see how our guys reacted to that, that was, that was fun too, just to, to, to be able, instead of, you know, wearing a tech suit every time uh, to get up and race, because you don't know when the next time you're going to be able to race will be. So, um, so, so we wanted to, we wanted to, to hit one of those relays with a qualifying time. We did that in the, um, uh, in the, in the, freestyle relay that uh, 200 freestyle relay that that first day and and uh and and, and jeremy and i had agreed that we were gonna wear tech suits on the end that you know we're gonna get another opportunity there and in our 200 medley we, you really can't aggregate that 200 medley so we just we we needed to to pop a provisional time on that and, and we felt good about you know those four guys stepping up and doing that and then finally, our 800 free relay, we knew that we could aggregate um, a, a time with that. So we, we feel good about where our relays are and, and you know, knock on wood, um, you know, one of the things that you take away from these last 10 months is, you know, that day to day and minute to minute, it's different. And, um, you know, even though we have our Pac-12 championships on the schedule, um, you know, there's still a chance that it may not happen. So. Uh, we wanted to take care of uh, just the administrative piece of, of NC2As and qualifying and get some pieces in place uh, but before we got uh, to, to Pac-12s. Um, and that was our, our mindset going in there. So we put an em uh, emphasis on three of those four relays and put an emphasis on that 200 freestyle individually. And our guys stepped up and did a nice job. Nice. It's, it's great to get all this context because again, you know, from the media, from the fan perspective, you just kind of see it on paper and you're like, wow, they went fast. And that's, that's <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, I, so I have to ask from your perspective, the, the, the meet you swam at in November where the guys were walking back and forth, they did one event each. Um, I, I remember looking at the results and being like, this is, you know, get it, just getting really excited for swimming. I got to ask Reese Whitley went 148 in the tuner breast. What did you make of that swim? Because I think as a swimming fan, that was just like, Holy Moses. That is, that is good. Um, that was super cool to see. Yeah. I don't think I said, Holy Moses. I may have said something else. Uh, that is that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but you know, but, but like you, you, you know, you know, I, there's a, there's a piece of me that, that, that looks at, at swimming and, and looks at our, um, our guys swimming and, 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 and I've become a fan of, of what they're doing. You, you know, I become a fan of, uh, of, of how they're moving through the water and, and they have a performance and, and there's a moment there where you're a fan and you're like, wow, that's, that's, that's fast, it, you know? And, and then, you know, you, you, you sort of put on the coaching hat and sort of act real cool about it. Like, oh, yeah, these are things <laughs> you can do better, blah, blah, blah. So, you, you know, it, it's, um, but I, I think for all of our guys and Reese included, um, uh, you, you know, I say that as a coach, but I also just wanted them in that moment to appreciate what they were doing. And, and, and yes, that performance is great, but just being able to step up on the blocks and race someone other than ourselves um, and have it be a, an actual competition. Uh, that was, that was exciting. I mean, you, you know, Reese, um, you, you know, after you know, went down the street, warmed down and, you know, was able to connect with him later, um, you, you know, wanted to, to start, you know, analyzing that swim and figuring out how to get better. And it's like, dude, just enjoy it right now. We can start working on it in 24 hours, uh, or, or I guess, you know, 48 hours, uh, from, from that moment. But like right now, let's, let's let that, sit and appreciate that swim and appreciate 
what we had to do to, to, to get there. And, and, and not only just the day of, you know, warming up and walking up and coming in and diving in, but just like all the, you know, the, the, the conversations, you know, what we've had to do uh, with, with our different cohorts of training, with what we've had to do in, di- in training in different facilities and different locations and, you know, how we've had to, you know, manage our long course training, short course training, weight room. I mean, it's been a puzzle that we've had to put together uh, and it was a challenge in the fall. Uh, you know, every couple of weeks, there were some things that were a little bit different and, um, and, and, and just, you know, what we had to do as a group to get to that moment, just wanted our guys to appreciate racing again and, and not, not uh, look past, everything that we've had to do from April to, to November to, to get to that uh, moment in time. Yeah. The, I, I had to ask about that just as, you know, as a, as a gushy fan, but um, I think the sense of gratitude, the sense of mindfulness has been, it been a big theme for everyone, swimmer, non-swimmer, coach, athlete, you know, whatever. Um, and as you mentioned, it feels like your first year of coaching. Um, right. And in terms of just, in the pool, swimming, navigating that, what do you feel like you have taken away from these 10 months, you know, as, as a first year coach? Yeah. You know, that's a good question. I was, I was talking with uh, Roman Willits, our, our volunteer assistant this morning, just about like, okay, you know, this time of year, you, you know, you tend to look forward and, and as you know, as I get to the you know, decade NC2As and, and we start competing, you, you know, there's, there's moments there where you start reflecting back, okay, what, what did we like? What did we do? And, you know, we're, we're so far ingrained right now in, in the rhythm of our week and the rhythm of our training and what we've, and what we've done. Um, I, I think it is going to take kind of moving through March and, and completing this to, uh, to step back and, and, uh, and reflect. And then we may not even step too far back in March. I mean, we, you know, we still need to press through April, May and into June. Uh, and into July. And, uh, you know, it may take some, take, take some time to unpack all this. Uh, you know, I may be on a beach in Hawaii in August, just kind of thinking about this, <laughs> you, you know, just trying to, to rest and relax and recoup and, 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 and contemplate my, uh, my, my place in the world uh, over the last 18 months and what we've been doing. Um, you, you know, but it, it, there's, um, I, 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 I can't, put, you know, put my finger on it and say, well, we need to do this uh, because we, we did so many different unique things uh, in terms of, you know, how we cycled in a race phase in the fall um, that we normally wouldn't do. It would normally be heavy training, but we, we were anticipating racing in November, in the first part of November, and we just didn't want to go train, 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 train. And then, okay, step up on the blocks and let's go race. Let, let's do some things to prepare our bodies to race. Um, and so that was interesting. And how we came off of that and how we got back into training. Uh, you know, our, our weight room availability, just we had some different times than what we normally, uh, than what we normally utilize. Um, and normally we're in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. And because of timing, we were there in there for an hour. And so a lot of our guys were in there four times a week and, and how we, and what we did dry land wise, which was a little bit different, um, and, and how we did some self care work. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't have access to massage therapy. We don't have access, um, uh, you know, to, to ice tubs, to different things that we utilize in the past. And so, uh, how do we utilize, um, you know, some different things that our guys have, whether it's a Theragun, what, you know, whether it's even a lacrosse ball or, or just certain segments of the day and, and how do our guys um, uh, utilize those segments to rest and relax. Uh, one of our swimmers, Jason Lauser, on a call with our, uh, with our alumni uh, a week ago um, had, had made this point and I thought it was interesting and I always, I, I, I thought this may happen with our guys, but he articulated it so well, just talking about their day to day is so different that they wake up, they come to the pool, they train and, and they go home and, and they, and, and they're doing class like, like this, right. They're not walking around campus, going class to class. And, and while you miss that social interaction and that engagement with the professor and the ability to raise your hand and ask a question in class, 
there's some, there's some performance benefits from that, <laughs> you, you know, just resting, relaxing guys, getting back into their comfies, you, you know, not in, into their clothes, uh, you, you know, and, and, and just kind of, you, you know, re, uh, relaxing in front of a, uh, front of a screen. And when it's done, you know, they, they, they close the laptop and they can, you know, rest, recover and not think about going to the next practice or logistically going to the next class and, and what that entails. So, um, it, it's just, uh, it, it's a, it, there's a lot of things there that I, I think as we finish this season to step back and say, okay, I like that. I want to incorporate that. Um, I didn't like this. We're never going to do that again. It, you know, those, those are the things that, that, uh, we'll, we'll get to as this season, um, you know, wraps up for us. Yeah. Have, have you mentioned self-care and I think, yeah, and then I think you took it in the, in the, in the context of rec- physical recovery, sure. um, have, have you, but you know, you mentioned it when talking to Reese about his race, his, his 200 breast, you know, it's like, just take 24 hours, be in the moment, appreciate that have, have in, in this environment in these last 10 months has, um, you know, mindfulness, doing, doing any sort of mental, emotional work, uh, come, come onto your plate as, as the role of head coach? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, you know, the, the mental health of our athletes is a, is a big concern, uh, uh, during this time, uh, we had a student athlete at Cal, uh, take her life. Zoe Rogers from our field hockey team. We had our field hockey coach on our team meeting, on our zoom, uh, zoom team meeting. Uh, talking to our team um, about that, about that moment. Um, uh, I, we, we, we spend, we spend time in conversation. I know our guys spend time in conversation with one another, um, but we also uh, spend time as a, as a group and, and address it and, and talk through it and talk about it and want to make sure that there is a, a, a place and a, and a space and, and, uh, and an opportunity um, to have conversation. Uh, it's, 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 it's important, uh, especially during this time, but even not during this time, it, it's, it's an important conversation to have. So, you know, I think we've experienced it, um, you know, firsthand and having one of our uh, student athletes, um, you know, take their life and, and just what that means and how, how, you know, our guys, you know, sort of pull back and, and reflect on, on where they are and how they can communicate that to one another and how they can communicate that to me, how they can communicate that uh, to, a, to a psychologist, uh, how they can communicate that, um, you know, to someone in our student health center, how they can communicate that to someone in our athletic department. Um, there's so many avenues to that. And, and that's one of the, you know, one of the important pieces that our uh, field hockey coach uh, talked about is like, there's so many different avenues. Um, and, you know, if it's not having conversation with a teammate, having conversation with departmental resources, having conversation with campus resources, you know, having conversation with your coaches. So yeah, it, it's, it's something, it's something, uh, uh, Coleman, I, I know where my limitations are. I'm a, I'm a swim coach, uh, you, you know, and but more than anything else, I want to be able to help direct guys to uh, to people and resources that are way more skilled uh, in these areas than myself. And all it takes is just you know reaching out and saying I I, I need help with with this. And whether it's uh, whether it's the moment of a, of a pandemic or whether it's, uh, you know, the loss of a family member or uh, whatever, whatever, you know, that, that piece that, um, that is, is um, you know, holding our guys back from being the, their, their best selves. Like, uh, I, again, there's, there's experiences that I have that I, can, that I can talk through, but there's certainly experiences that I don't have and education that I don't have and, um, uh, you know, just, just kind of the, uh, the, the, the piece of, of mental health that I can help direct. I can't answer, you, you know, I can't help answer. So, uh, we, we talk about that as well, that, uh, knowing that, okay, you know, the, the person that you're talking to may not have the, the, the right answer, but we're going to, we're going to keep getting you closer to that person that can help you with this, um, with this point in your life that, that you find yourself at. 
It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, and like you said, just bringing it up, just having the conversation of, Hey, I think I need help. What, where should I go? You know, it's, it's a good, yeah. definitely seems like a good starting place. Um, I feel like a, a lot of the mental health of athletes of swimmers during this period is, has, you know, kind of been affected by their motivation, um, with, and with, with so many meets and racing opportunities up in the air, it seems like motivation would be harder to come by than, than maybe it normally would be. Um, do with, with these sporadic racing opportunities, do you feel like motivating the team has changed throughout these last six months? No, I, I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, just, it, it's, um, you know, I, I think the, the, the schedule piece of it is, is a little bit different, but I, but I always think, you know, sort of, you know, working towards, uh, you know, being our best in this particular year. Uh, yes, we're, we're working towards March. Yes, we're working towards June. Yes, we're working towards July. Um, and, I, and I think our, our guys are motivated um, are motivated to be at their best at that, at those points in time. But I don't, you know, I just, I, I, I can't, you know, again, it's kind of getting back to that phrase. I can't put my finger on it. Um, like I, I feel our group is as good as they have ever been. And I, and I, you know, I don't want to throw out that superlative. That's not in my nature, but it's, but the enjoyment that I have in coming to the deck and in the enjoyment that I see in our groups working, um, like that, like it, it hasn't, no, no, that's not to say it's like, Oh, it's all great. It's, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, send out the tweet. Everything's wonderful. You know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it, it's not that, it, you know, it, but it's because it, it, there are, there are moments when there's, when there's struggles, but it hasn't been this, you know, underlying, you know, uh, sort of thing with within our group uh, I, I feel like they're in a they're in a great they're in a great spot I mean we as a team we had our you know highest semester GPA in the fall and like there's just kind of enough of these uh, sort of sort of you know points that you look at as a coach where you know the feedback that you're getting from whether it's a practice a, a, a race uh, whether it's it, you know against another team or just in, internal, you, you know, the, um, you know, the GPA piece, the, what, what's going on academically, you know, the, the conversations and, and how they happen and, and what's going on in the pool deck. I mean, you know, the, the interesting thing is we haven't been in our locker room, right. Since March. And so our locker room is, is outside. So I hear the locker room talk, you, you know, those are the things that, uh, you know, what's sort of going on. You get a feel, you get a pulse of the team, you know, they're outdoors, you know, doing their, uh, you know, doing their tech changing, which I know is against USA swimming policy, but it's like, listen, this is what, this is what we're dealt with. You know, this is what we're doing. This is how we have to do it. Um, so, you know, so you, you hear all that and it's just, it's like, there's nothing that, um, you know, that would lead me to believe that that motivation is, is a, uh, or lack of motivation is a concern, you know, with our group considering all the circumstances. I, you know, I, I don't, and I don't know why that is. I mean, maybe it's just the uniqueness of the individuals on our team right now. Um, you, you know, maybe there is a thankfulness to be able to, to, to do this. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm not searching for that answer. I'm enjoying it as we're, uh, as we're going from day to day. Of the week. Can't argue with that. No. Um, so obviously a lot of uncertainty with, with these, with these upcoming Olympics, you know, reports back and forth. Oh, it's happening. It's not happening with your role as the men's Olympic head coach for the, for the swim team. Um, what, what has that role looked like for you in these last few months? Obviously you have no say in whether the Olympics happen or not. So I'm not asking, do you, you know, are they going to happen, but just what, what is your role been? What is that role entailed for you in these last few months? Well, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it, it goes back to a group effort. Um, you know, the folks at USA Swimming, um, you know, Greg, myself, and when I say folks at USA Swimming, I mean, we're, you know, looking at, at, at Lindsay, we're looking at Carly that are, that are helping really sort of plan out the day to day, uh, you know, Tim Henchy, Keenan. I mean, there's a, there's a level of involvement and engagement, uh, 
uh, Matt Barbini, that that is, um, you know, from from everyone that is is really trying to, to think through this in a in a day by day scenario. And, uh, you know, kind of really after the Olympic trials. Right. I mean, our Olympic team is, is set after our Olympic trials and then what what we are doing kind of day to day, minute to minute. Uh, from that time to the uh, to the end of the Olympic Games, and as things uh, change and shift with um, you know with different restrictions, guidelines, policies, you know we're we're allowing ourselves and our schedule to be nimble enough to change to to, to plan for a plan A, plan B, plan C. Uh, so you know through this, um, you know I, I I felt like in in working with this group that that we plan for an Olympic Games in 2020. Now we're planning for one in 2021, but we're also planning for a plan B in 2021. So I feel like uh, I've, I've planned for about two to three Olympic games right now. <laughs> and um, that why, that's why when I feel comfortable in saying as, as we move through this one uh, and as we move through 2021 and, and as, as Tokyo finishes up, I, I am I am uh, I am excited to 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 you know pass the torch uh, to the next men's Olympic coach in 2024, whoever that person may be, uh, and, and God bless them. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, I'm 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 excited um, uh, for this uh, to get going. But those experiences that we've had in planning for one, you know, two two A two B. Uh, sort of Olympic Games has has been really really helpful and and it um, and, and it and it causes you again just to to think through the details of what's going on and to really sort of visualize and and put yourself in the place of an athlete and what they want to know and what they want to experience and what they want to do in the in the day to day leading up to the Olympic Games and how can we create an experience for them that is going to put them in the best spot to represent our country i mean that's those are the things that we we've been working on um you, you know <laughs> for a long time now um so it, it's um it, it's been a challenge but i i feel like we're, we're, we're getting closer uh, to the finish line and and um you know it, it's uh it, it can get a little bit you know testy because we're we're adamant about things i mean we're adamant about representing team usa as well as we can uh, and putting our personnel in the best spot to, to win medals. And so when you have a lot of passionate people about that, yeah, you, you have some, you have some really good conversations about that. And the, the last thing I want to last topic topic I want to ask you about is just you personally. You topics or topics. That's fine. Topics. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, you're Obviously, if, if listeners can't tell through all of this, you're a busy guy. Um, you also have two kids, I'm pretty sure, and, and a wife. Um, you know, through and all of this, <laughs> and a dog. <laughs> um, how, how, how have you, as, you know, I guess, as a swim coach primarily, um, how have you been able to stay mentally, emotionally stable uh, and consistent. And, you know, it's like, you're doing things at a very high level for our sport. How are, how are you able to do that on a day-to-day -day basis through all this? What, what has been helpful for you? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the reason why we're, we're doing this call at 6 PM Pacific time is because I have to also coach, uh, the sixth, sixth and seventh grade basketball team that my son <laughs> is on. So, uh, I think that's the harder piece of my practice is, you know, corralling, you know, 12, uh, you know, seventh graders and eighth graders and, uh, and, and getting them to, to, to learn the, uh, learn the fundamentals of, of, you know, the pick and roll, you know, so, uh, it, the it, triangle. Uh, yeah. Well, we're not, it, Coleman, we're not, a, we're not at the triangle offense level just yet. You know, we're, we're trying to, uh, to do simple things really, really well right now. Uh, yeah, which, uh, you, you know, as, as, and I, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. I'm trying not to answer your question, but, uh, you know, was, which made me, uh, you know, come home after that and, and look up some, you know, and because we're going to the university of Houston to compete for a PAC 12 championship to go up and look, look up some old, uh, 
you know, 1982, 1983, 1984, University of Houston basketball videos of Faisalam, Ajama, Akeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, Larry Neeshaw, Benny Anders. I mean, I was like kind of geeking out on that for 30 minutes. So that's a little bit of how I keep my sanity. You know, I get like a thought in my head and it's just like, okay, I'm going to like go all in in this rabbit hole. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, an hour later, it's like, where am I? What happened? You know, um, <laughs> No, it, it's, um, it, it uh, you know, one of the things kind of through this is that, uh, you know, I, I've been in a little bit of it by, by sort of the, the, the nature of, you know, not having access to, uh, you know, to kind of to our, our offices and, and hospital billion 24 seven that, that I have had some more time at home. I haven't been traveling as much. So, you know, having that balance of Jack and Mia and Kathy and our dog, Henry, you know, here, um, has been really good, uh, you know, that at, at the, uh, you know, at the end of a long day, I can, I can, you know, I can come home and, 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 you know, and some of our, 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 our days are a little bit longer than others. I mean, in, through a course of a, of a week, Coleman, we're with our different cohorts that we have, you know, kind of going on through the week where we're, we have 18 practices and, and I'm at 16 of those uh, in a Monday through Saturday, um, you know, two of our practices run at the same time on a Tuesday, Thursday. So I can't be in two places at once, but, you know, and, and even, a, even on a day like today, uh, you know, we had one of our swimmers with a class conflict that had to, to go a little bit earlier. Um, you know, we have, you know, one of our swimmers that's, uh, that's training right now, uh, chases at the pool with him. Um, you know, just, just because we, you know, he was, um, you know, feeling a little bit under the weather. And so we wanted to, he has to go to the facility by himself and, and go through his, you know, testing protocol, make sure that he's okay and healthy. So, yeah, so it's a, it, it's a challenge, but it's, but it's nice to have, uh, you know, have the, have family that understands what I'm doing, uh, that um, is supportive of that, um, that, um, you know, that, you know, doesn't get, you know, mad at me when, when I, when I do have to, to travel for, uh, for a week, week away or go to a pro series meet or, or come up to our conference championships or NC2A championships, but you know, certainly understand the, the, the dynamic of my role and what's going on. So we're, we're surrounded by just phenomenal people uh, and, and I'm surrounded by a phenomenal staff, uh, you know, not only on the pool deck, but just, uh, you know, just around Cal that's, that's sort of, you know, battling this out. You know, I was talking with our baseball coach, Mike New the other day, and, you know, just, uh, texting back and forth with, uh, our basketball coach, Mark Fox. And it's just, it's one of those things where, where you all feel like you're, you're in it together and, and there's a sense of community in that. And, and that makes it, um, you know, that, that makes the, the, the day, uh, that much more enjoyable. And then just going through it with our guys, you know, it's like, I, I love coaching our guys. Uh, you know, they, they, they make me laugh on an, an everyday basis. They, they laugh at my jokes. They're not that funny that they, they, they laugh at my jokes and, and it's just, there's enjoyment in that. So, you know, at the end of it, uh, you, you take a deep breath and you reflect and it's like, yeah, it was a pretty good day. Uh, you know, I may have been on the deck for, you know, eight hours, but that was a good day. Uh, it, you know, so those are the, those are the things that sort of, sort of keep, keep me balanced, uh, you know, going day to day, week to week. And, uh, and I enjoy doing this. Uh, and, and even the guys, I, I don't know why they, they, they stick around here and, and, and listen to me, but the guys I've been coaching for, you know, eight, nine, 10, you know, 11 years, I guess now it's just like, it's, it, it, it's fun to, to, to figure out how to, how to get them faster and better uh, during this time as we're, as we're approaching, you know, for their career as we're approaching June, as we're approaching July for them. So uh, that was a long answer to your short question. I kind of went off on different tangents, but hopefully I got it. I think you got it. I, I have one sub question of that. And that's, yes. you know, even, even listening to you talk, you know, you have phrases like week to week, day to day, minute to minute, um, it seems like one, one way you are able to do what you do at such a high level is you are, you've become a master at periodization. And when you're doing something, you, you are able to put your time and energy and focus on that, move on to the next thing. Um, is, is that something you had to practice? Is, is there, 
was there a, a period where you had to develop really focusing your time and energy on one thing at a time? I, I don't know if, if I do that. <laughs> uh, you said it well. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think there's a point in time in my, in my career where it was like, okay, I, I've, I've got a shift to, to this, uh, to this piece. I've got to, you know, work, you know, kind of compartmentalize on th- things when I'm working, I'm working when I'm, um, when I'm at home, I'm at home. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, our, <laughs> our new hobby, uh, with, with my wife is, is now pickleball. So that's, uh, you know, when I'm at pickleball, I'm at pickleball and, and, you know, and I, I hate losing at, at pickleball and I'm not very good at it, but I, <laughs> losing that pickleball but you know so um it's um yeah i i don't i don't know if it's that because i i i really don't i'll say it this way uh coleman i i i think about um i think about swimming and and think about workouts or think about the individuals on our team a lot like i i have a you know, I, I know there's some coaches that sit down and can write out the workout and, and that's it. Uh, and that's what they're going to do. And boom, that's it. I, I, um, while I can do that and sit down and write out the workout, I'm still thinking about it and tweaking it and changing it. And, and even on the deck, just thinking about it, tweaking it, changing it. So, you, you know, when, when, you know, someone asks like, okay, when you write a workout, it's like, I write a workout all the time. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about those things. Now there are times when, you know, I, I can't multitask very well. So I'm sitting down dinner and having a conversation, you know, with family there. Yes, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm present in that moment. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of times I just, you know, catch myself, you know, watching the screen of a, you know, of a TV and there's a show on, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not watching that. I'm thinking about, you know, what's going on with, with, uh, you know, with somebody's workout, specific workout the next day or whatever it may be. So um, while it may give the appearance that that's what I do, <laughs> uh, it's, it's certainly not, you know, not what goes on in, in, in you know, in, in my mind, but, uh, but I try when I'm, when I'm there on the deck, I try and be there on the deck. Now that's, that's been hard as well because, you, you know, with the amount of time I'm on the deck, we have meetings, we have stuff that go, that has to happen. And so there may be a time where I have to you know, be on a meeting and still coaching practice. Uh, or there's a time where, you know, Roman or Chase is running practice and, and I have to step off and, and take a 15 you know, minute phone call with, you know, with our, with our admin, with something that's going on, you know, regarding procedures, protocols, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a challenge with that, but, uh, you know, this is, um, I don't know. I, I just, I, I love, I love what I do. And, and now I just get to do more of it on the pool deck, uh, you know, by, by, uh, a little bit by, by force, you know, so that, that's been, that's been enjoyable. Well, I don't know about you, Dave, but this has been another successful, uh, round of me trying to crack the enigma that is your mind. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me. Any parting thoughts before we sign off today? No, I spoke too long. Uh, (laughs) I spoke too long, so I'm sorry. For someone that sat through all of this, I'm sorry. You, you, what you win is a Bears Baller brand t-shirt. I will give it off my back and send it to you if you sat through this whole thing. <laughs> you co- comment your emails in the description below. This yeah, is Dave yeah. Durden. <laughs> yeah. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.